Herzlich willkommen beim 37. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfestival, dem DocFest, bei unserer dualen Edition. Wir sind heute in der Reihe Doc Deutsch, unserem deutschsprachigen Wettbewerb, der etwas, etwas Besonderes ist, weil er, ähm, wenige, weil er einfach Filme zeigt, die sich mit dem deutschsprachigen Raum auseinandersetzen und die können in diesem Fall sogar aus Portugal äh, kommen, denn wir zeigen als deutschland wäre den Film Journey to the Sun von Ansgar Schäfer und Susanna de Sousa Dias. Herzlich willkommen, schön, dass ihr da seid. Ähm, da, euer Film hat ja schon eine ordentliche Festivalreise gemacht, ihr hatte eure Premiere in Amsterdam, auf der ITFA gehabt, war auch, hat auch schon eine portugiesische Premiere beim Dr. Spoa gehabt und jetzt bei der deutschen Premiere beim DocFest. Vielen Dank dafür und ähm, ich darf euch sagen, euer Film war wirklich sehr besonders. Äh, ich bin ja einer der Programmer in dem Wettbewerb und es war, ich habe sonst keinen Film gesehen, der dem in irgendeiner Form nahe gekommen ist. Und ich fange, ich würde das Pferd gern von hinten aufzäumen und euch mit dem letzten Satz in dem Film äh, sagen. Das heißt, ähm, wenn ich es richtig zitiere, ist, ähm, ähm, äh, so ist das eben, nicht so wie die Leute äh, es erzählen. Und ich glaube, es ist ein guter ein gutes, ein Satz, um euren Film zu verstehen, eure Herangehensweise, weil ähm, über so ganz besondere geschichtliche Erlebnisse gibt es ja viele zeitgeschichtliche Dokus, Dokumentationen. Aber ihr habt ja diesen Weg überhaupt nicht genommen. Ihr habt rein mit Archivmaterial gearbeitet. Und man lernt auch die einzelnen Protagonisten eigentlich nur über eure Stimme kennen und über die Bilder als Kinder. Könnt ihr mir erzählen, wie ihr auf, ähm, zu diesem Zugang gekommen seid, den Film so zu starten? Uh, uh, sorry, I have, I, I, I quite... I, can, so I, I repeat it in English. The last, last sentence. Yes, the last sentence of the film. No, the last sentence of the film. And then you ask how, how did you find the story? And then yeah. how did you start to... How did you this approach? Okay, this approach. It's uh, for you. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so the approach of the film starts, <laughs> or do you want to start? Yeah, the idea was actually, um, but yeah, I speak so much. The idea was actually not to make the, the ordinary reportage style documentary, but to break the uh, the standards or the what you would say not standards, but uh, the expectation or what the. No, the, the actually, okay, I'm going to start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I usually work with found footage and the, uh, official archives, actually our films uh, before um, are center on the questions related to Portuguese history, but in this, this wider perspective, I mean, we, we, we use materials from Portugal and in this case from Austria, not just to focus on these aspects, but also as uh, focusing on these aspects, we can reflect about our present uh, and other uh, situations that could be similar. So the idea and the, the one thing that you have to pay attention at the, the, is that the archive images are not reality. So are an interpretation, a representation, an interpretation of reality. So we had lots of images from official institutions and especially lots of familiar images that we discovered while we were uh, making, re uh, re uh, collecting the, the interviews. But the problem is that the official images have, um, they are biased. I mean, the Portuguese ones especially were made during the dictatorship, so they had clearly a message. And with the familiar family albums, we have to think that also, these images are very codified. I mean, they were taken in a certain way. Usually is the, 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 the masculine person of the family, the father, in this case, the foster father that take the pictures. Um, they are um, arranged accordingly to the, the systems of representation of the, of the era, of 40s and 50s. So we had to, to look at these images and to try to go beyond the surface. So the idea of the film is that uh, we articulate testimonies with images in order to open up not only the images, but also 
these experiences of the past that has um, that are that are um, told in present, told in in the present. So, for us, it's not the idea is not to go to the past to 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 see and to find the truth in the past, but to see how this past arrives at the presence at present. So the, the, the idea of the film and the aesthetical options that we decided to, to, to do are related with all of these aspects. Good. Uh, and um, uh, what's also interesting is, er geht trotzdem, erzählt der, der Film eine chronologische Geschichte von, von, der, von zerbombten Wien bis zum Abschied wieder. Und, äh, sind, und wir erleben die einzelnen Schicksale, die so zufällig äh, sind. Da ist eine, würde mich natürlich interessieren, wie seid ihr auf die, wie habt ihr diese ähm, Personen kennengelernt? Wie sehr habt ihr sie gefunden? Weil das ist ja ein Ereignis gewesen, was die meisten Menschen gar nicht wussten, dass äh, fast 5000 äh, junge äh, Kinder nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg von Österreich nach Portugal gebracht wurden durch die Caritas. Wie seid ihr auf die Geschichte gestoßen? Ich weiß von dir, Ansgar, dass du ja über portugiesische Geschichte promoviert hast, und also einen Zugang dazu hast, aber erzählt mir ein wenig darüber. Also, das, 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 ich spreche so kurz Deutsch, also das hat tatsächlich auch mit meiner, mit meiner, mit meiner Forschung äh, zu tun, also weil ich, äh, ich hatte auch meinen eine erste Arbeit habe ich geschrieben über die jüdischen Flüchtlinge in Portugal während des Zweiten Weltkriegs. Und da habe ich tatsächlich viele Leute befragt und alle haben wieder von den Kindern gesprochen. Kinder, 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 die damals kamen. Aber es gab keine jüdischen Kinder in Portugal. Es gab nur die, die Kindertransporte nach England, aber es gab keine jüdischen Kinder. Und trotzdem waren die Kinder da, die waren wirklich in dem kollektiven Gedächtnis von so vielen portugiesischen Filmen, äh, von, Firmen, äh, von Familien. Also irgendwas musste dran sein in der Geschichte. Und da habe ich jahrelang später habe ich das erfahren, dass es tatsächlich nicht Kinder während des Zweiten Weltkriegs waren, sondern unmittelbar nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg. Und dann waren es natürlich österreichische Kinder. Ja, und natürlich auch so, dass die, die, also die jüdischen Kinder kamen nicht nach Portugal, weil es einfach die, die portugiesische Regierung, die Salazar-Diktatur, Salazar hat den Zugang von jüdischen Flüchtlingen in, in, in Portugal praktisch unmöglich gemacht. Deswegen, ist, deswegen kam es gar nicht dazu, dass die jüdische Flüchtlinge nach Portugal kommen können. Ja. Und äh, wie gesagt, also da, da kam ich halt auf diese Geschichte, dass es die österreichischen Kinder waren. Und dann hat es der Zufall ergeben, dass wir später mal in Kontakt kam auch mit der österreichischen Botschaft. Und die hatten tatsächlich eine Datenbank aufgebaut gehabt. Äh, und das waren dann über 3000 Namen in dieser Datenbank. Und dann haben wir uns tatsächlich mit verschiedenen von diesen Damen und Herren getroffen. Und seitdem waren wir in engem Kontakt, haben wir diese Geschichten dann tatsächlich eruiert. Und ähm, mit wie viel... Ähm von den, diesen ehemaligen Kindern habt ihr gesprochen? Also mit, mit, wir haben mit mehr als 50 haben wir, mehr als 50 haben wir interviewt, teilweise mehrere Stunden noch. Ja. Das waren schon viele Interviews. War euch in dem Moment auch bewusst, ähm, dass ihr äh, sozusagen ihr, ihre, ihre jetzige Präsenz auslassen werdet? Also es geht ja wirklich nur um ihre Erlebnisse, Erfahrungen dort. Und ähm, mit wenigen Ausnahmen zum Schluss ähm, wirklich nur diese erfahren, aber wir erfahren nichts, was aus diesen Kindern geworden ist. Es ist nur die, die, die einzelnen, sehr unterschiedlichen Erlebnisse einfach. Wie gesagt, in gewisser Weise ist das Zeitfenster 48 bis 51, etwa, worüber wir sprechen. Ja. Ja. Aber am Anfang, als wir den Film konzipiert haben, als wir den Film entworfen haben, war es eigentlich nicht klar, dass wir unbedingt nur Archivmaterial machen würden, oder? Nein. Das war... We didn't, we didn't know that, mm -hmm. that, we would, that yeah, yeah. would be filmed just with archive material. It really just, uh, it happened. Mm -hmm. It happened because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because we found We've, all of the, these images yeah. during the, the research and also during the, the filming. And it was when we decided that we'll do uh, a film only using archive footage. The point is, when it really got interesting, okay, we, we knew that they were photographs because we saw some of them, we didn't know there were some hundreds of them, but it got really exciting when we actually discovered this footage, film footage, which is eight millimeters, it's 9.5 millimeters, which is a very rare format actually. And we had to send it to Germany to have it developed and scanned. And, but uh, nobody knew when we had these reels in our hand, we didn't know if there were still some images on it because they're 70 years old. Yeah. And they were in a, they were in a shoebox. <laughs> so suddenly there was somebody coming, a nice guy. He actually, I've still got this shoebox, and he showed me. And then there were these reels with this 9.5 millimeters. It's just like, 
finding a clump of gold you see that's more or less like this it's just a, such an amazing such an amazing uh, feeling you have yeah, because a miracle it was yeah it's it's a sort of a miracle it's a sort of miracle that then you have this incredible quality of these images and um all the the films which we are seeing is from this uh, uh um um films from these roles uh, no, what we see in the first part is uh, is Austrian okay, archive, Russian Austrian, archive. Yeah. But uh, so, the yeah. films we, we see from Portugal. The films we see from Portugal is um, it's, it's VHS as well. Uh, it's yeah. it's uh, actual uh, it's, news reels. It's, it's, it's new the, reels from it's the news reels from the government, from which the is government. sixty millimeters. So it's when you see the, the the boat is coming, the, the big the ship is coming, and, and the and ship and is leaving, and yeah. you see the, the the children on the on the boat on the on the, on the vessel. And, and, uh, and women, yeah. It, the, uh, and then you have these, where you actually have the perforation in the middle of the of the image. This is the family nine point five millimeter. Okay, uh, yeah, area, yeah. And then you have one little uh, piece, which is a, a little girl going down some stairs to the to the to the beach. This is from a family as well, eight millimeters. And this film, this this girl, as she actually tells us, her adoptive father, foster father gave her this uh, reel so that her parents could actually see how it was looking like, but they didn't have the machine. She never saw this again. She never saw the material. She didn't know what was on it. And how did she, she only saw it when we sent it to her 70 years later. So <laughs> this is, <laughs> and actually what happened was uh, last year we had, last, last week we had this premiere in Portugal. Yeah. And it was actually- In the, war, in, this, yeah, in the, was in the, the English war, war. And yeah. uh, there was actually uh, the adoptive, uh, sister of one of these ladies this, the lady is 82 and the adoptive sister is 96 so she was sitting there and she looked at the screen and says that's me that's me so and then she actually started talking all the time because she didn't know that she was on the picture that she was in the film yeah. so wow. and there were actually yeah there were several scenes where actually people say it's the, it's the first time i see this i never saw these images and they only saw them something like yeah 70 75 years later Okay, that's really an amazing uh, um, moment uh, when you see this old uh, woman to see her again as a child. Yeah. Um, I'm also interested about um, how you choose the stories that were told from the, mm -hmm. from the, the former kids, because the, uh, some of them uh, sounds like uh, uh, Amadova film. We see the moment when she says goodbye, and uh, the moment after uh, the father had a heart attack, and all these things, and they are so different. How do you select uh, the different stories for the film? Actually, it was a very complex work, but at a certain point, uh, when we were hearing the, the experiences, we decided to, to focus on the moment where they talk about the child, experience. child ex experiences. But there are two ways. One interesting thing in these kind of testimonies is when we see the, it, it is usually, well, it is the adult that is talking, of course, but sometimes we can feel the child uh, emerging. And so it, we can, it's not the adult that is reflecting about the, the children, the, 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 ay, the childhood um, times, but is the actual children, child that is talking. So, and it's very, it's very interesting to, to see these changements uh, during the testimonies. So, and another thing, it, this was a surprise for us, um, was to, to, to realize how vivid were the memories of the childhood of these persons. They can tell things that happened 70 years ago, like they were uh, happening yesterday. So it was really, really a very powerful experience to, to, to contact with these testimonies. So we decided to choose uh, these moments when we feel that it's the child that is Talking. talking about the experience mm -hmm. uh, and so this this was one important decision that you made another one was to try to see what they have seen about uh, portugal 
uh, what new what new aspects could emerge from these testimonies also about Portugal, but not Portugal well as a country, but also as a dictatorship and what this can say us about authoritarian systems. Yeah. So this is what was other option. So and another thing important in this movie, in this film, is that each person. Um, it, it's not a film of characters, uh, it's a, a collective voice, it's a collective experience of lots of children. So yeah. we decided not just to choose different persons, A, B, C or D, but to, to work with, <coughs> with these memories and these testimonies so that we could create a kind of Freeze, I don't know the name of Freeze. Yeah, yeah. yeah really, of, yeah, mm -hmm. of, the, the, of this experience and actually showing something new about it. Yeah, um, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, in the, in the other topic is uh, your sound design, um, how you uh, work with the, the, with the sound in the film. Um, was this, uh, how do you? find a way to this all these uh, decisions to this film uh, if it's the to, to work with the um, uh, found footage to work with the pictures only to hear these collective memories from the former ki uh, children and in the, i think it's a very good connected with the with your sound design tell me more about it mm -hmm. <laughs> Sound design is very important, actually. And uh, we start to work with Didio Pestana. And uh, the, the problem when we, yeah, it's very important in the films that we also work, control it. No, yeah, it's, work, but it's, work, yeah, work, work. okay, <laughs> but it's control, work. Uh, with the, the sound design. We, we also work on the sound design. So, um, Didio Pestana, he composed several sounds, he gave us to us, and then we recomposed them, we edit. It's very important, this, uh, uh, this editing, not just to edit the image and, to, and testimonies and have an idea, okay, here I want this sound, there I want that other sound, and then to give some to someone to do this. It's impossible, at least in, in my films and, and yeah, in our films now because it's it's uh, co-direction. Co it's totally impossible. The sound, it's completely um, it's I don't know, it's it's it's, 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 uh, it's embedded. Yeah, sound, image, voices, it's 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 a total, it's, it's a, um, it's something totally, yeah, it's, it's, it's a gesamtheit, yeah, it's a some, yeah, it's it, totality, it's not, basically. It's yeah, not yeah. possible to separate, to separate them. one thing from the other, so, yeah. yeah. And you, you, yeah, the point is really, uh, we have, as Susanna already said, we like to have control, basically. So yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, it's to, not, it's yeah. not exactly to have control, but, but it's it's to work with the sounds as a matter so important as an image, mm -hmm. you know. So the idea is that one. So the the composer gave us the materials. We could recompose. We could cut them. We could put on the on the, the moments we 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 thought they could appear, mm -hmm. and then of course that we gave the material. To the composer, so that he could, uh, yeah, yeah, and and do the final presentation. But it were, yeah. But we have to decide which sound will appear where. In, where. But of course, that he composed some some. For instance, the beginning of the film. Perfect. It, it was he proposed this sound, and it's there. Yeah. But then we cut a little bit so that it could be adjusted. Yeah. How long did yeah. you? Um, 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 how long did it take from the from the idea and when you start? You found the footage and until the film was finished. How long did you uh, did you take your journey? I it, yeah, actually, film? we started with the interviews two thousand sixteen. Ah. It, we made the first interviews, but it was still research interviews, and then. We finished the film in 2021. But I think it took but, us at least three years, the, the editing process. Yeah, but with interruptions, yeah. but yeah, but uh, it, it was a very long journey. It actually. was a long journey, yeah. It was yeah a we long could journey. have done it several times, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Five years is a long time. And um, uh, what will be the future of your film? Um, 
So you were on uh, different film festivals uh, all over Europe. Now, what will be next with your film? Actually, I don't. Uh, what was in Stuttgart? First movie, but we cannot say. That's a problem. It's not oh, official. We cannot say. No, no. We cannot. We cannot. Oh, we cannot say. We cannot already. We, we cannot say the festival because it's not officially it has been selected. But we cannot tell the festival. Festival. We, we cannot we, say the name of the festival because it hasn't been official. Uh, no, no. I don't mean the film festival because I, it's a your, your film is a, um, a cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. But I, I also think it's about. Uh, it also works perfectly in a, in a museum context. Ah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have to say that we didn't th uh, thought yet about, uh, um, yeah, what the installation. Yeah, but, see, we yeah. have, but they have this idea actually with the podcast, because the point is, uh, okay, you have there 106 or 107 minutes of uh, many interviews, but you had to leave so many interesting things out. Because we really, it was, it was incredible stories. We, they just didn't fit and we didn't have the time. And well, yeah. I think making a film of four hours, it's not necessarily the best thing you can do. Yeah. So we actually, we already started making sort of a podcast. Actually, it was part of the team. Yeah, it was, was yeah. our son, basically. And yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so the, they, the were, invited, they, yeah. they had the idea actually using these interviews, not to have them there, um, lying somewhere in a, in a cupboard but then making a podcast with with the help of these interviews because there's so many stories that they still have there to are tell. amazing stories that you didn't put in the film really really amazing yeah and uh, so we can hope to to exp uh, to hear or see more of the stories in the future mm -hmm. yeah we hope so too yeah <laughs> Oh yeah. Thank you very much. Um, vielen Dank für, für, für die Zeit und für, für das Gespräch. Vielen Dank. Ähm, der Film ist übrigens auch bei uns für den Kino Kino Publikumspreis nominiert. Also vielleicht ähm, kommt der auch so. Bitte nutzt die Chance. Stimmt für den Film ab. Das geht auch online. Und euch erstmal vielen Dank und und ich freue mich auf eure nächsten Projekte und mehr von den Kindern zu erfahren in der Zukunft. Vielen Dank. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Tschüss. Tschüss. Tschüss.